Okay, next we're going to talk about secondary color correction. So what do we mean by secondary color correction? Well, I'm going to show you this shot here. This is of a diver uh, that was shot underwater, obviously. And as you can see, his skin tone looks just like the shark, where it's all gray. So I want to try to make it look more natural and make him look like he's got regular skin tone. So second, with se secondary color correction, I can go into a shot and change a color that needs to be changed. Let's say, for example, we have, uh, you know, you're on, you have a shot of a golf course and for some reason the greens, all the greens are brownish and not as green as the fairways. Well, we can just isolate the colors of that brown color in the greens and, and make them look green. Um, and the same type of thing we're doing here, gonna just to kind of make his skin look, look better. So uh, what we're gonna do is go into color mode, my color correction workspace. And again, you can make your color correction workspace you can make it look however you want it to look. You could create windows, move windows around, and save that workspace. So whatever works best for you. If you need help doing that, we can help you with that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, just like we always do, is I'm just going to do an overall correction of the entire shot. So I just want to pop these sharks a little bit more. So I'm going to raise up the exposure a bit, give it a little more contrast and more saturation. Okay, now we have nice blue water, and the shark looks pretty good there. So I like that. So that's the first color correction. Now I'm going to do, like we did before, I'm going to add a color color correction, and then it's going to add Lumetri color effect, and then immediately rename it, and I'm going to call it Diver, because I'm affecting the diver's skin. So I'm calling it Diver, and as again, if you look in your effect mode, now you have the first color correction you made, and the second one that says Diver. And again, you can toggle back and forth to work on these more if you want to, but let me work on Diver. So what are we going to do with Diver? Well. Again, I don't want to affect any colors in the shark because his gray matches the colors of the gray of the shark. I just want to affect his skin. So I'm going to do what we did last time with the eagle and just cut out the diver. So I'm going to create a mask. So I'm coming here, I'm going to use the bezier again and just kind of cut around this guy here. And before I do that, no, actually I'm on the first frame this time. Good, that lucked out. So uh, it, it, if you do this, do it on the first frame of the clip and then you can do a tracker from that point. So again, I have this. I'm going to go ahead and, since I'm on the first frame of the clip, going to go ahead and play out the tracker. It's going to add keyframes and follow him because the shot is moving. And we could double check that when it's done and just come up here and just kind of scrub through and see if it's he's all encompassed in the mask the whole way, which he is. Okay, so we'll keep on the first frame again. So now when we come over here to the Lumetri, I want to go ahead and apply the hue, saturation, luminance, secondary color corrector. It's called HSL secondary. So just for, I'm gonna close the basic correction for a second and just open the secondary color correction. So the first thing we have to do is select the color. What color do we want to change? Well, you have an eyedropper here, okay? You have these eyedroppers next to it. I'll explain what that is in a second, but we're gonna set the color. Set color by using the eyedropper. So we're gonna take the eyedropper and just select a color in his hand. Now, if you could see, it did select a color here, but we can't see it. So what you need to do is come down. There's a color grayscale you need to turn on, which will show you what you selected. You know, and see, you can see I selected the hand. Now, I didn't get all of the hand, okay? There's other colors and variances that need to be selected, too. And that's what these little add and minus droppers are. So I'm going to hit the add dropper and select other areas of the hand until I get the whole complete hand and maybe some of his face, too, which I need. And you can just... Keep selecting color plus and keep clicking until you get those colors in there. Keep plus, plus, and let's come up here. There you go. And let's get some more of his finger. There we go. A little bit more up there. So I basically almost have all of his hand. And I don't want to go too much further. If I do make a mistake or it, it selected too much of a color, and everything pops up, uh, you could just hit Control z to go back, or you can come to the minus and unselect those areas. But right now it looks pretty good. Like I do have his face in here, his forehead, and most of his hand. There's this little black area. Let me go minus and see what that does. If I go minus and select the black area, it might get rid of it. I think it got rid of too much, so I'm just going to Command-Z. I'm going to keep it. I'm not worried about that changing color. So basically now we've selected all the color we want to change in this shot. Now underneath, it's called correction, and you can do a 
basically you're gonna affect all the colors and you wanna to go toward the color that you want. In this case, we want flesh tone. So flesh tone's probably up in here in the amber looking. And he's, he's kind of blue, he's down here. So if we just drag this opposite, it should give us the color we want. Now, the problem with this that I notice is that you gotta, once you make a selection, it doesn't update right away. If you select off and on the clip again, it'll, it'll update. Um, so it moved a little bit. I also, here's more amber in this area in the color temperature. So if I bring this up, you'll see, and this looks like it's real time, that's good. It's changing, changing the temperature there. And we'll add it's a little green, so let me just add a little red. And bring this up a little more. Okay. So you can see we're adding a little bit more flesh tone in there. Okay, a little saturation. Now one thing you want to do too is this little blur. Uh, knob here. You just want to bring it up a little bit. Again, you don't want to have hard edges. The more you blur it, the better. Seem the more seamless it'll it'll be. So there we go. I think we have his hand. Some of his forehead there looks good. So we're going to click off the grayscale, and there you go. Um, we'll go ahead and render and see how it looks. As you can see, there's still there's a little bit of problems in here. When we get to this point, it looks like he drops out. So I'm going to select that color. All you have to do is come into it again, make sure we're on Diver, come to the secondary color corrector, hit your little plus button because we're adding whatever color that is, and there you go. Okay. Looks like under his thumb too had a little bit of issue. But let's re-render it and see what we have. This one's more difficult. I think it's easier if we had a green uh, clip to show. This one's a little bit more difficult. There's a lot of intricacies in the in the clip, but it's not bad. It looks pretty good. And I'll show you exactly how I did it. And this was the final result. If you spend more time with it to get the you know right colors and all that, it could look really good. So here's the go back out to edit mode. And again, here's the original shot, and here's how it actually went out. You can see how natural that looked. Uh, the one thing I'll show you again when we go into the mat is, the one thing I forgot to show you is you could feather it as well. So come back here to the mask I made, go ahead and feather it so it looks, it blend, everything blends in nice. Okay, and that is secondary color corrector.